All right, example A says find the length of the missing segment x. So that's right here. So we're finding the length of the segment from the vertex to this tangent point here. And based on our theorem, we can say that x squared, so that the short segment squared, is equal to 4 times 4 plus 12. So we have our outside segment, which was our a in our examples, times a plus b, and that's equal to c squared. So we're going to have x squared is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16, plus 4 times 12, which is 48, so x squared, and then 4 times 16, or I'm sorry, 16 plus 48 would be 64, so we have x squared is equal to 64. Take the square root of both sides, and we get x is equal to positive or negative 8. And of course, we can't have a negative length. There's no such thing as a, a negative length measurement. So that value doesn't matter to us at this point. So x is 8 units long. Easy enough? All right, let's take a look at example b. Example b says, first fill in the blank and then solve for the missing segment. So this one's very similar to the last one. We just need to sort of lay out what we're going to do ahead of time. Remember, our theorem says we're going to take the tangent segment multiplied by itself, and then we take the outside segment of the secant line and multiply it by those two segments added together. So our, uh, for our equation here, we're going to have x times itself, and that'll be equal to 4 times 4 plus 5. Yeah? So now if we actually solve this, much like the last one, we'll have 4 times 4, that's 16, and 4 times 5, that's 20. So that's going to give us x squared is equal to 16 plus 20, or x squared is equal to 36. Take the square root of both sides, and we get x is positive or negative 6. And since it obviously can't be a negative length, just like the last one, x must be 6 units long. Yeah. And then example C. Again, find the value of the missing segment. Now this time we're not missing the segment that's on the tangent line, we're missing one of the parts on the secant line. So we're going to have 20 squared is equal to y times y plus 30. So we have 20 squared, that's 400, is equal to y squared plus 30y. And we're going to put them all onto the same side of the of the equal sign here, so we'll have y squared plus 30y, y squared plus 30y, wow, my fingers are all going the wrong ways here, 30y minus 400, Whew, got it, sheesh, and then we'll factor this, we have 400 could be 40 times 10, so if we had positive 40 times negative 10, that would multiply to be 400 and add to be 30. So that means we could factor this as y plus 40 times y minus 10. We can check that, make sure that works. y times y would be y squared, and y times negative 10 would be negative 10y. 40 times y would be 40y. So those two would combine 40 minus 10 is 30, so that takes care of that one. And then 40 times negative 10, negative 400, so that works. So now we have 0 equals y plus 40 times y minus 10. So y would either be negative 40, because that would make this 0, and it wouldn't matter what this was, or y would be positive 10, because that would make this one 0, and then it wouldn't matter what this was. So y must be positive 10, since, again, our length can't be negative, so the negative 40 wouldn't possibly work. So there we go.